So in an interesting article that was recently posted via GamerRant.com regarding Sony and Microsoft publisher slash studio acquisitions, the benefits as well as the inevitable negatives of the industry consolidation. Well, what GamerRant is referring to as, and I quote, an arms race, an interesting way of describing it, particularly when you consider the humongous checks Microsoft has been and is writing, and to somewhat of a lesser extent Sony. As noted by Gamer Rand, both Sony and Microsoft have been writing large checks to acquire studios, and both have plans to purchase plenty more studios in the near future. So I'll be cherry picking the more pertinent parts of the article, it's fairly lengthy, though a link in the video description is provided for your perusal. So yeah, we're firmly family into the ninth generation of PlayStation and Xbox consoles. And with that transition came some pretty major changes and advancements within the industry. Things that seemed inconceivable just a few short years ago, the likes of Bethesda, publisher behind popular franchises like Doom, Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and with the Xbox Activision Blizzard acquisition going under regulatory processes, the gaming landscape has experienced a monumental shift with less of a focus on hardware, placing services front and center of that seismic wave. And one could argue with the proliferation of platform services such as Game Pass, PlayStation, now Project Spartacus soon to be renamed and rebranded with a three-tier membership option, one could argue exclusivity is more and more essential than ever in order for users to sign up to those services and remain. Which is where my issue with it comes into play. We are simply going to be inundated with game streaming slash download services on top of the, the other media services we pay for, such as Netflix, Prime, Hulu, HB, HBO, Paramount+, Plus, Disney, now TV, I mean the list is growing to endless proportions. My concern is the cannibalization and oversaturation of the industry, reminiscent of the great gaming crash of 1983. Now it's impossible for all of these services to coexist in the long term. I mean the market will just not allow it. And many of them will fail or be consolidated. This is not good for creativity and innovation and will surely affect the quality of the content in the long term. Now Gamer Rant article really goes on to state that in a in just a few months both Microsoft and Sony have expanded their stable of first party studios while some some games are glad to see the two companies make big moves and really breathe new life into these studios. Others are concerned that the consolidation of power will you know inevitably harm the game industry regardless of how how gamers feel, it seems that neither Microsoft nor Sony are interested in slowing down anytime soon, though both have well, quite different objectives in how they go about that. So since the launch of the Xbox Series X slash S, Microsoft has not been shy about acquiring new studios. Zenimax Media was acquired by Microsoft in March 2021. The acquisition put uh, Bethesda Softworks under Microsoft's umbrella and with that plenty, plenty of popular franchises have now become the property of Microsoft, including Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series. So Zenimax is also the parent company of Arcane Studios, Tango Gameworks, ID Software and Machine Games, the uh, Orphanstein producer or developer rather, which really brings the hit franchises such as you know Doom and Evil Within and Prey to the Xbox Studios family. Now the acquisition cost Microsoft a whopping 7.5 billion and it was a significant event in the game industry not just because of the attached price tag but also because of the speculation that future games from certain franchises will be Xbox and PC exclusive. And just when you think Microsoft hit the pinnacle of video game acquisitions in January 2022, Microsoft announced that it would be acquiring Activision Blizzard for the staggering price of, yeah, close to $70 billion. The astronomic acquisition, if it passes, will make Microsoft the third biggest gaming company by revenue, with only Tencent and Sony sitting ahead of them. Now, with the acquisition, a plethora of franchises will fall under Microsoft's ownership. This includes the ever-popular FPS series Call of Duty, as well as Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Diablo and Crash Bandicoot, just to name a few. Incidentally, Crash Bandicoot originated on a PlayStation platform. 
So the acquisition has seen really a point of concern, particularly in the, the world of esports, and it remains to be seen whether Microsoft's deep pockets will improve the Call of Duty League and the Overwatch League, or whether exclusivity deals will end up crippling the growing esports industry. So you can see why some people would be concerned. Now, Sony has also made some big moves. And in just 2021 alone, the company acquired five studios. Most studios will be familiar to PlayStation users and new acquisitions made a ton of sense in terms of Sony's long-term goals within the game industry. Now, Bluepoint and Housemark are studios that really both have had a long working history with Sony. So it's not unexpected that the studio would be acquired and Returnal recently released by Housemark, very successful PS5 exclusive, while Bluepoint's remake of Demon Souls really showed off the power of PS5 at launch. Firesprite has plenty of knowledge of VR gaming, so that was a very good acquisition seeing that Sony is pursuing and continuing to pursue VR technologies, and it will be an asset to Sony with the upcoming launch of PlayStation VR 2. While Nix's, Nix's software, which specializes in making PC ports, they've done a few 360 ports and conversions, I'm sure, um, they will with Sony's continued drive to penetrate the PC gaming market, really assist Sony in that regard. And lastly, Valkyrie Entertainment is a studio that has experience helping other Sony first party studios and will likely serve as a support studio. So Sony kicked off 2022 with a surprise announcement that it had acquired Bungie for 3.6 billion US dollars. Now Bungie is the creator of Halo, uh, when the series was great instead of just good, which has since become one of Xbox's flagship franchises with developer 343 Industries. However, in recent times, Bungie is better known for the online first-person shooter series, Destiny. So Sony's acquisition of Bungie may bode well for the company, which may have really been noted as a weak spot for them when it comes to FPSs and online multiplayer experiences. Although Bungie is part of the PlayStation family, Jim Ryan, who is president and CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment, has stated that the Destiny creator will remain an independent and multi-platform studio and publisher, which may be great news for some worried about potential exclusivity deals as far as at least Destiny is concerned. Studio acquisitions are unlikely to stop anytime soon as the game industry grows and both companies will need to keep up with the ever-expanding changes on the landscape. In a recent interview, Jim Ryan stated that Sony is by no means done when it comes to studio acquisitions and gamers should absolutely expect more. Microsoft has a similar strategy going on and Phil Spencer, Microsoft's gaming CEO, has recently stated that Microsoft is definitely not done when it comes to acquiring studios. So they were kind of mimicking and parroting each other there. There is a reason to believe both Spencer and Ryan, as journalist Jeff Keighley, has reported that he has received word from multiple people that there are a few other big video game deals in the final stages of negotiations. Although, at this point, we should be taking that with a little pinch of salt because there's no names mentioned here, there's no source, and, uh, and I understand you can't always give your source. That's, that's just how the, the nature of the business works. But definitely take it as a grain of salt until it's official. Not that I doubt it. So some do fear the consolidation of power that is occurring, and there are, are many good reasons for this. It may lead to further exclusivity, which is a matter of recourse that has divided gaming communities. Furthermore, having fewer independent studios may potentially lead to less innovation. Jim Ryan claims that there is no power consolidation happening over at PlayStation. Instead, he argues that this, well, this had nothing to do with the industry consolidation. This had everything to do with a shared vision on how we could do things better together. So the article goes on to its conclusion with, no matter where you stand on the matter, and I'm certainly interested in what Foxy Games UK viewers, what your opinions are on this, so don't be shy in the comments though, you really ought to expect to see more studios getting snapped up, and whether you like it or not, as Sony and Microsoft find themselves in a studio acquisition shopping spree or arms race, as Gamerant puts it. Yes, that means that some games you love will only be available on PlayStation or on Xbox, but not both. If you want to continue to play those games, you'll even need to purchase both platforms, not very practical for everyone, or you'll have to upgrade or buy a new PC and take your chances over there. However, this ends up being a positive development for the game industry and gamers, or whether it serves to benefit capitalistic needs, primarily has yet to be seen.
However, it is clear that whatever happens, the gaming industry will never be the same again. So what say you? Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. Go ahead, sound off, show your thoughts and opinions on today's news. And that brings us to the end of today's video. And for all your gaming news, rumor, plausible speculation, hit the like button, of course, subscribe. And yes, hit the notification bell. You can help us reach more gamers, so feel free to share the video. You may want to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon. If so, thank you. And you can find a link in the video's description. And that concludes our time together today on this Monday. Thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time. Play games, not corporations.